Okay, so let me show you how the emulator works with a simple little test program like this one. First, you need to be editing the actual program. And we're going to go over here to the designer and try and connect to the emulator. This is one of those things you have to be patient with. So I'm going to leave this in real time so you can see exactly how long this can take. can see this is just like a phone it's charging well not really it's always at 50 percent uh, you have your dial buttons here and you can see that it's going through and preparing everything just like a real phone so now it's automatically unlocked it and it's sending this little simple test program to the phone. Now the first time you do it, it's going to try and update it. So let's go ahead and click OK. It's now being installed. Now this is very important. When it's finished, you click Done. You don't just open it. You have to click Done and then reset the connection. So this first time that we run it, sometimes you have to do this, this several times. I'm going to go ahead and say Got it and go back over here and we're going to say OK. We're going to replace the app that's on the phone and install it. Instead of open, remember, click on done. So you might want to have your mouse over on this side as you're waiting for that. I'm going to go up here to connect and reset the connection. And then try and connect to the emulator again. Do not upload any pictures to this phone. It does not have very much memory. Do not lock it. Do not do anything to it. This is the same emulator that is used by everyone on that computer. So you are not allowed to go in there and load it up with music. It will not dial anybody. So it's strictly for testing out these programs. We seem to be in a loop here. This is a problem. It's one of those things we have to be patient. So there we go. Application installed a second time. I'm going to go ahead and click Done again. Let's have it keep trying in this case. It seems like everything is going right. There we go. Let's just try and connect to it. Oh, there it is. We finally get to see 
this program running on the phone. And it doesn't actually do anything, it was just to show a button. That way this can be built and downloaded very, very quickly. Uh, you will create your app and test it out on here first, and then put it on one of the Kindles or your own device. But that is the patience required to get this emulator to do what needs to be done. Sometimes you have to reset that connection and then connect to it again a couple of times. Um, hard resets don't really work very well here at school. And running the AI companion on an actual device is great at home. It allows you to make changes to the app and see it immediately instead of having to go this route. This is building the APK not to save to the computer, we'll do that at the end when it's finished, but to try it out on the phone we can do a quick QR code scan and this is compiling this simple test program. This is why I made it so simple. If you have a lot of pictures or a lot of coding in there, this can take a really long time to create the QR code. QR code is like a barcode, it's just something that you can scan and it links directly to the app itself on the MIT App Inventor website. They store it, but only for two hours. So after a couple hours, this QR code no longer works. But right now, it could be scanned with your phone, and it would download it. And if you've got it, the setting on your phone to install third-party apps not from the store, then you'll be able to install your own. And that is getting an app ready for testing.